Table Football Monthly? Don't mind if I do. Hello, hello, and welcome to the September edition of Table Football Monthly. Keith, yes. All I want to know yes. is the show packed? Is it packed? It is brim to the very rim. Oodles? With oodles mm. of stuff. There's always oodles. We'll be putting you out of your misery in just a moment by announcing the winner of last month's competition. You'll recall we asked you to name the ground where the floodlights that appear on our end credits is situated. The winner of that will be winning a Pegasus striped Astro, Astro pitch, pitch worth 57 pounds. And the giving doesn't stop there. The pitch comes courtesy of Subutio World. They've kindly followed that up by allowing us to offer you this very month two top spin Premier League teams of your choice in this season's colours in named boxes. So two teams from this selection could be yours. If you can answer the question, we're going to pose for you in exactly one minute and nine seconds. Plus, our blast from the past will be Striker, one of the most successful games of the 70s. I love Striker. Yes. And you're going to love this bit because incorporated into that will be a little tribute to Mark Lawrenson. And the reasons for that will become apparent shortly. Now, with the Champions League qualifiers just about to start, we've made our match from yesteryear a feature of the greatest European side of all time, which is... Real Madrid. The one and only. When the European Cup started in 1955, they only went and won the first the five, five competitions. And we're going to feature no the stopping. goals from their 7-3 victory over Eintracht Frankfurt in 1960. Canario. And the second equalised. Our special guest is, the last two months, we've had Subutio Club secretaries. Yes, yes. This month, we have Stuart Grant. Stuart Grant? What, the Stuart Grant from you beauty -o? Only the Go very on. same. <laughs> He'll be coming in to talk about his table football experiences and taking on our Subutio Challenge! On the training ground of dreams, no less. Yes, he'll be our third contestant in that, so let's see how he gets on. After that, some of you may be old enough to remember the Daily Express National Five Asides, and before that, the Evening Standard London Five Asides. Well, we'll be telling the story about those and incorporating our product review, which will be of Subutio's fabulous Five Aside game, Football Express. Surely the only genuine tabletop reproduction of the game ever. Packed. Packed to the, to the brim. So, as promised, with the results of our competition and the question for the new one, let's join... Dylan. Danielle. Danielle. Straight in with the competition result. Last month we asked you which English football ground has these floodlights. We had entries ranging from Brentford, Southend, Portsmouth and Fulham among others. But the correct answer is... Blundell Park, Grimsby. Believe it or not, no one had the correct answer. But we're desperate to give away our strike pitch, so we've put everybody's name who entered into a toaster. Are you serious? Don't move, I'll be right back. We need more women on this show. The following draw was made under tight security and professional scrutineers. You put the names in a bonio box? Yeah, I don't need it, I ain't got a dog. Have a rummage, pull the name out. Smith, ice peel. Yeah. The winner is... Zach Walker. Zach Walker. Oh, well done, Zach. Zach will be in touch. Well done to our winner, Zach Walker. The pitch is on the way to you. All the way to Colorado. We are so international. Keith, I could deliver it personally. No! Oh, better get on with next month's competition then. This month's competition, as Keith mentioned, offers one of you the chance to win two top spin Premier League teams in this season's colours in a named box. To win
win, let us know which Premier League team plays in this away kit. We will announce the winner in next month's show. Good luck. If you've never used a top spin team, uh, then here's a clip I put together earlier in the week showing you a comparison between topspin players and Subutio heavyweights. We'll start with the Subutio heavyweight and a little bit of background. This little chap here in the red strip was the first plastic figure created by Subutio in 1961 and was something of a revelation. The base of that figure didn't change much for decades. However, the design of the player did. He was superseded in the mid-60s by this chap, now known as the heavyweight. It's my personal view, but when Charles Stadden designed the heavyweight player in 1966, he created the iconic figure that would come to represent the Subutio brand more than any other. And all for 12 pounds and 10 shillings. What a steal! Next up, we have Topspin, a far more recent creation developed by Italian Alberto Vignati in 2003. His aim being to keep the traditional style of spin to win Subutio alive and kicking, or perhaps it's more accurate to say alive and flicking. It's easy to see that the Charles Stadden heavyweight Subutio player design influenced the Topspin but that's no bad thing. They both look fantastic. So other than looking similar, how do they behave on the pitch? Well, the only way to find out is to put them through their paces on our Subutio training pitch. Top spin up first. Dead center in the slide test. Now the heavyweight. Matched it. Top spin now on the spinning challenge. Perfect. Heavyweight, same mark. Same result, passing. This time, the heavyweight drops it right in the center. Top spin now. Oh, as close as makes no difference. Top spin chip, straight in. Heavyweight, nothing to separate them. On the pitch, top spin in the orange strip, heavyweights in the white. To my ears, a slightly chunkier sound from the heavyweight. They're made from a slightly more dense plastic. A defensive spin for the heavyweight. Sorted. Top spin, surrounded by whites. Not a problem. So, no real perceptible difference on the training pitch. But when it comes to the finish of the players, that's a completely different matter. Many of you will know that the Subutio heavyweights were outsourced to local residents for painting and their skill levels could vary considerably. Whereas I think you'll agree, the top spin players are painted beautifully and consistently, particularly in the hands of the likes of Paul Lloyd. And in this modern day and age, we also get a far more ethnically realistic spread of player types. I've used a lot of top spin teams in my time and they're good. Excellent spinners. They are, they're good. I've used a few yeah. as well. Um, so it's a competition well worth entering. Now, for the time being, enough with Subutio and Topspin. We are going to have a look at one of the best and most successful tabletop football games of the 70s. And that is, of course, Striker. Striker. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but here's a little reminder anyway. This little chap needs no introduction. Tap his head and the player kicks the ball. It is, of course, Striker, the fast action football game with a kick. The box was a monster, and the reason? Well, let's lift the lid and take a look. The folded pitch takes up an awful lot of space. Beneath the pitch, the game pieces are quite compact. The ubiquitous, for the period, blue and red teams, the ribbon pitch surround, and these are the metal clips that hold the surround in place, and very effective they are too. Then we have two scale balls, two goals, and two crouching keepers. The rules are straightforward and beautifully illustrated. On the reverse, instructions for attaching the ribbon surround and assembling the keepers. And let's take a closer look at them. 
The pivot design is excellent and very smooth. An additional feature, place the ball in the crook of the keeper's arm, spin his other arm and he throws the ball out, forwards, unlike poor Gary Sprake, bless him. The ribbon surround is a tight fit, so be sure it doesn't pull up the corners of the pitch, but also that it's taut enough to offer good rebounds. The pitch, as you can see, is marked out with zones. Let's assume the red team are playing left to right. The two attacking players take the forward two zones. The two defenders, the zones immediately behind the halfway line. Do the same with the blues and you're ready to go. Possession is maintained by passing the ball into a zone occupied by a teammate. You don't have to hit the player, just get the ball into the zone. It's rather satisfying. Should the ball travel into an opponent's zone, possession is lost. The goal area belongs to the keeper alone. If the ball comes to rest in the area, a defender can be pulled back to clear, so long as you remember to replace him afterwards. Shortly after the game's release, an accessory appeared that blew our minds. The diving keeper. Too, too cool. Wanted him to lead it. Gibbon saves Newcastle once again. The diving keeper also came as standard in Super Striker and World Cup Striker. I mentioned earlier uh, that as part of this segment on Striker, we were going to include uh, a feature on Mark Lawrenson. Now, the reason is, a couple of months ago, I was having a browse through one of the auction sites and I came upon this team. Now, I don't know about you, but I couldn't help thinking that these players resembled Mark Lawrenson. And being the kind of people we are, we thought it would be a brilliant idea uh, to create a Brighton side in which all of the players also look like Mark Lawrenson. We... Oui. Or rather, Nikki did. Thank you. And she also painted the goalkeepers. And let's be honest, she did a fabulous job. For those of you uh, around the globe who may not be aware of the football legend and pundit icon that is Mark Lawrenson, here is a brief biography. Mark Lawrenson joined his hometown club, Preston North End, at the age of 17. He played over 70 games for the club, before joining Brighton at the beginning of the season 77 and 78. Then managed by the ex-England and Spurs legend Alan Mullery. The fee was 90,000. Ironically, Brighton outbid Liverpool for this versatile youngster. Lawrence's reputation grew at the South Coast Club, where he made 152 appearances and scoring five goals. But, and the big but, by 1981, Brighton was suffering financially. But this meant Bob Paisley, then Liverpool manager, was able to finally get his man, paying £900,000. Alongside Alan Hansen, Lawrenson formed one of the most creative and talented central defensive partnerships in English football history. One European Cup, an FA Cup, three League Cup and five Division One titles followed, including a League and Cup double. Lauro made an impressive 356 appearances for Liverpool, scoring 16 goals, until injury brought his Anfield career to a premature close. During this time, he also represented the Republic of Ireland on 39 occasions. This is why we're dedicating this segment on striker to... Mark, Mark Lawrenson, football, football legend! legend. How do I play this again? I'll tell you after, trust me. So I can shoot from anywhere? If you're feeling lucky, Will. Ooh, poor keeping from Smithy. Whoop, whoop, I thought whoop, I'd let my bed start. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. Interesting goal celebration. Smithy rushing things a bit. Final, here I come. But then a great shot, worthy of a replay. One each. Smithy keeps the pressure up, but it's Danielle on the break, making it 2-1. Oh, a little argy-bargy between players at half-time there. Danielle getting the hang of things. 
lovely pass with the outside of the foot. But again, it's Smithy from in his own half. He's equalised again, although dodgy keeping, it's got to be said. An incident off shot. A quick free kick, it's 3-2, Danielle. Great low shot. Oh dear, Smithy, not happy. Look at his face. Last minute opportunity. Danielle saves. Lawrenceon Football Club 2, Lawrenceon Hove Albion 3. We'll be taking a look at the further developments of Striker in next month's Table Football Monthly, including the range of teams, accessories and their own Astro Pitch. You are not going to believe this, Smithy has only gone and done a runner. He's zapped off to Greece for two weeks, probably because Danielle beat him at striker. So I'm left to finish the rest of the programme on my Todd. No, 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 but no, no. Fear not, Keith. I'm here. Danielle is here. I can almost see all of you watching this thinking, what a relief. Some quality <laughs> has returned to the programme. Right, well, we were talking about our match from yesteryear. Cool. Which was the 19... <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> Which was the 1960 European Cup final between Eintracht Frankfurt and Real Madrid. Played at Hampden Park. <laughs> and the scores on the doors. Ah, you've got to admit, this is style. Now, I'll complete the... Oh, yes, where I was, yes. Eintracht Frankfurt had beaten Scottish champions Rangers in the semi-final 12-4 on aggregate, whilst Real Madrid beat their arch-rivals Barcelona 6-2. So, the chances that there were going to be goals in this game, well, it was a given. And there certainly were. To many, this remains the greatest European Cup final ever played. Is that it? As easy as that. Cool that work. <laughs> Canario. And the Stefano equalized. Del Sol to Canario. And the goal is done it again. And Eichelbrot, now Puskas. This must be number three and it is. Right on half time. Now it's Puskas. And there's Hinto moving tremendously fast. Stop it. Jack Mart's having a word with the linesman to see whether it's a penalty or not. It is a penalty. And it's Ferenc Puskas going to take it. Four goals to one. In the middle is Puskas. And it's a goal. Oh, that is now a hat trick for Puskas. And we're beginning to see now the vintage Real Madrid. The sort of football that has made them the greatest club side the world has ever known. Oh, what a great pass. And it hits the post. That's Puskas. And another one. Chris to Stein. And a great goal by Stein. Well, Stein has been an intelligent player, so he certainly deserves that goal to make it six goals to two for Real Madrid. Now De Stefano. This month's guest is Stuart Grant, who, who <laughs> creates Ubutio videos on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them. I think you might want to watch a few after today. Um, Stuart. Hello. Thanks for coming down. Really Thank good you for having me. Especially as I know how far you've driven. Long way. Long, right. long way. Worth um, it. More than worth it. We spent two months talking about clubs. Yep. Gonna, for once, we're not going to do that now. <laughs> This is just going to be self-indulgent table football nonsense. Yeah, like it. You're a good bit younger than me. So, when do you start and why? So, I got my first set when I was about seven 
It was Italia 90. I just got into me, just got into football, and I got the Italia 90 box set, grandstand. Oh, I remember it well. I've got a photo of me playing it under the Christmas tree. It was amazing. And then I was an only child, so I know. So I used to sort of play it on my own. I didn't probably play it as much as I wanted to. I used to shoot really random videos on it. I remember watching the Blue Peter one day. They was doing like stop motion with a camcorder. So I think my mum does camcorder. I used to do stuff like that with it and bits and bobs like that. But then I grew up, discovered girls, discovered other things. Football manager, championship manager came along. So it went away. I know exactly what shop I sold it to. The shop's not there anymore. I still drive by it and I look at it and I think, why the hell did I do that? Now and that's, yeah. that's an interesting one because what I found with a lot of people is the first thing they've done when they've come back to the game is try and buy replicate it and that's exactly what I've done so it all started what I did it all started I wanted the stadium in the loft I remember sitting with me mate we had a bit of a lad's flat maybe having bad that sort of thing and he went I don't know where it come from for him to say well I'm going to have a train set in the loft when I'm older I said no no it's a beauty set it's a beauty stadium do it I thought I'm going to do it and then moved out with my missus we had this massive loft we lived above a church I thought I could put a pitch up there and like the stadium we've got over there, you lot can't see it, but the stadium now built it in the loft and then it just sort of snowballed into this whole collection thing. That's all I wanted was the Italian 90 pitch, the goals, balls, players. I had, so I had it set up with West Germany v Italy. Oh, was there were some good kits then because that was the old lightweight. Proper kits, lightweight yeah. Paint. This is There's some good painting on The this. whole argument people always have. People always say, oh, heavyweight's better than lightweight and I'm one of the few people that says no. <laughs> lightweight's are better. Yeah, heavyweight's are better to play with but lightweight's... The kits, man. Them early 90s kits were awesome. The Arsenal Bruce Banana, the Germany 91. I can remember awesome. buying Norwich City for no reason and they had the sponsor on, Aces. Yeah. And just thinking that look. Was it the tremendous. yellow one with the yeah. green sort of triangles yeah. on it? Yeah. It was a glorious Love looking it. kit. Now, <clears throat> one of the things um, that Stuart and I found we had in common when uh, he arrived today was that uh, we both do this. We both sit here. <laughs> we sit both here talk, talk to a camera. <laughs> we haven't got any real friends. So, now, so you have got you Butio. Yep. Now, I'm not going to steal your thunder. <laughs> Tell us what, th what that is so, about. So, basically, I, I'll give you a bit of background. I spend a lot of time watching YouTube because there's nothing on the telly, yep. ever. So, YouTube, the fact you can watch it on a telly now, brilliant. Put YouTube on. And I'm... Basically, in general, I'm trying to relive the 90s, I think. So I watch a lot of old retro gaming stuff on YouTube. I've watched a little bit of technology. And I sort of see these people doing unboxings and toting about what they love and talking about maybe wrestling figures or something. I thought, hang on, I could do that with Subutio. So I've had a look on YouTube. There's nothing really on there. It's just sort of people playing and the odd tutorial. Don't get me wrong, it's really good videos. But I thought, there's no one sort of doing what people are doing with retro gaming and stuff like that. And there's this big community. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I've talked about it for ages and ages and ages. I thought, you know what, I have no idea what I'm doing. In I go. And if I'm honest, I still have no idea what I'm doing. I come down here and you've got cameras set up, you've got lights. I stand here talking to my iPhone. Right, well, in a moment, Stuart has kindly agreed to have a go at our Sputio <laughs> Challenge. Although, the list of, ca a list of caveats he's given me is so long, I can't actually <laughs> fit it on the screen. But what we're going to do with kindness friendliness and warmth is we're going to help him through <laughs> this crucial moment in his life it's a big moment so the highest score we've had is 22 okay I which get, i think is beatable i might get two no 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 i think you need to feel it i think it's gonna after, after for saying i'm only gonna get two if i do well on this now i'm gonna look like a hustler <laughs> which is a good he's look. sandbagging he's not he's gonna do his way through any any good is it so I hope I don't do well now because that'll be just as embarrassing. What we're going to do, we're going to go over to the uh, what did that, what Smithy call it? The training pitch of dreams. We're going to go over <laughs> for the um, Spucio challenge in just a moment. Um, but before that, Stuart, I've got to say thanks very much. It's Thank been you good very to much see for you. having me. Really enjoyed Thank it. Thank you so much for having me. And do take a look at you, Butio. Just type that into YouTube and have a look because the uh, most recent episode I watched, Stuart had just built himself a table. Well, so, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Let me know on Twitter. Let me know on Instagram. I'm very, very happy with it. <laughs> and you said at the very end, let me know what you think. Do you think you could do better? So, come on then. What do you think? I thought it was unbelievable. I thought all right. I thought it was oh, unbelievable. I'm awful at DIY. It was a little bit of envy. Atrocious. No, so it's a good it. job. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed as Stuart now takes on our Sabucho challenge. Wish me luck. What do you think? Yeah, Come through your finger. Here we go. We're away, and that's a definite three. 
Shot in. Oh, that's a bit short. Yes, stand him up, stand him up. That's a one. Round one, four points, a sound start. Spin, round two. Oh. 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 What's he got to do? What? Didn't really catch that. Hey! Pulled it in. Round two, eight. Fantastic. 12 scored in total. The putt now, always harder than it looks. You're in. Oh! Not happening. That'd be number one. Come on, we can feel it. It's going in. Feel it. Think it in. It's gone for power. Wallet. Last one. Oh, we can make this happen. Yay! <laughs> Round three, five scored, 17 in total, only two behind John Lauder. Last round, the chip. I don't know if that hit the bar or the win, in which case you only get three. Oh, I'll take three. The replay shows a clean chip, five scored. He's level with our leader, Bernard O'Connor. Second shot. Did that lift? Well, the player did. I had to get a cab to retrieve him. This is it. Oh, in and out. What's the ruling on that? Have we got VAR? Clean, it's another five. 10 for that round, giving a total of 27. Great effort. 27 points, only 27 points. And Keith, well that puts him at the top of the table. It certainly does. Bernard O'Connor's good score of 22 has finally been beaten and by five. Now if watching that has given your trigger finger a bit of an itch, do drop us a line if you want to come and have a go at our Subutio Challenge. Remember that the person at the top of the table come the end of the season will win £100 to spend at Subutio World. Yeah. And... Our two-part DVD on the history of table football. Ooh, I'm tearing up. I am tearing up. <laughs> we have reached our last segment in the programme. But please, please don't doze off or wander off anywhere because I genuinely think you're going to enjoy this. It's time for a little bit of... Five-a-side Five football. Five-a-side football, as we know it, began with a competition for London-based teams at the Empress Hall, Earl's Court in 1954. The rules were devised by the Central Council of Physical Recreation to include the dimensions of the goals, the D-shaped penalty area, rebound walls and the ball not travelling above head height. Games were played six minutes each way. These annual championships were sponsored by the London Evening Standard and were taken very seriously by the players. There was a forced gap between 1961 and 66. The tournament was suspended by a Football League ruling, but it returned in 1967, the year after England won the World Cup. And the West Ham side that won it featured Bobby Moore, Martin Peters and Jeff Hurst. In fact, Hurst, following his World Cup hat-trick, with another in the five-a-side final, helping the Hammers to a 4-0 win over Arsenal. By the late 60s and into the mid-70s, the game had grown into a national event, sponsored by the Daily Express, featuring the major teams and stars of the day, George Best, Rodney Marsh, Gordon Banks, and was televised by both BBC and ITV. No surprise then that in the early 70s, Subutio launched a relatively faithful tabletop replica of the game called Football Express, seen here advertised in the 1973 programme. And here it is in the flesh. The design is clever. Lift the lid and reveal the playing pitch. An Astro pitch style surface, plastic curved pieces to keep the ball continually in play, specially tooled goals, keepers in tracky bottoms, and the game utilises the 18mm ball. Perfect. Over the years, there have been many other five-a-side tabletop games, including the game we featured this month, Striker. 
but none have adopted the scale goals and D-shaped area. I've not seen any rule regarding blocking moves for the player not in possession, but it won't be the first time we've had to use our imagination and implement our own house rules. The original game came with players on moulded bases, but the game suits all player types. Spinning players can be tricky depending upon the age and condition of your pitch, but it really suits the flat bottom sliding players. Typical of Sabucho, there were accessories aplenty, especially package boxes, spare teams, keepers, spare goals. There were two versions of the game. This, the large set, and a smaller version, probably designed to take up less space on retailers' shelves. In the smaller version, the pitch is folded. And, as you'd expect, a folded pitch is more difficult to get to lie flat. and attaching it to a board is a sensible option. I've kept this one mint, but this one is nicely encased in a wooden box with a protective lid. This is the one we use most often. As you can see, it's built into a full diorama and I've attached foam pads to the walls to make rebounds a bit more realistic and to make the walls softer for the players to bounce off. The pitch has aged well and it plays beautifully. Sabutio <laughs> Football Express. The perfect break from playing 11 aside. Fast, furious, and great fun. Full size sets are available. They start at around 70 pounds, but for a mint version, you could be looking to pay up to 200. The half size box version comes up for sale occasionally as well, but out of the two, I'd really recommend the full size box. You're far more likely to get a flatter pitch. And who wouldn't want England mascot Ken Bailey on the front of the box. Well, that just about brings us to the end of September's edition of Table Football Monthly. Thank you very much for watching. To those of you who've written some very nice comments, thank you. They are really appreciated, aren't they? They really, really are, yeah. Yes, they are. So don't forget, don't forget to enter the competition. Don't forget, if you want to do the Sabucho Challenge, same address. And I was just... It's you and I, isn't it? I was just about to say, from Smithy and I, from Danielle and I. That sounds so much better. I like the sound of that. Poor old Smithy. <laughs> Bye, <He's> Smithy. <laughs> <laughs>